Welcome uh, parents to our Year 12 Parents Virtual Information Evening. Um, usually, obviously, this will be taking place in person, where you'd be meeting uh, key members of the sixth form and, and finding out um, key information about um, your son or daughter's progress through sixth form and what it will involve. Obviously, this year is slightly different. This is quite unusual for us to be doing this remotely. Um, but we're trying to provide you with as an authentic experience as possible and hopefully by the end of uh, this video you'll be able to um, have all that information and be able to ask any questions by communicating with us following that. So the purpose of the next 40 minutes or so in this video is, is to basically introduce you to some of the Sixth Form team and um, you'll be hearing from me, I'm Mr Wetton, the head of Sixth Form and you'll be meeting some key members of the team in virtually We'll be talking about target setting, examinations and assessment, how we will communicate with you and your son or daughter, some information, advice and guidance, and student finance options for university, and then the opportunity to ask any questions. So first of all, the GAF of Sixth Form team. Um, Mr. Newstead is the Vice Principal. He oversees Key Stage 3, 4 and 5. Um, you're hearing from me, Mr. Wetton, I'm the head of Sixth Form, the post-16 leader. Miss Allen, who you'll be hearing from shortly, will be the post-16 learning manager for Year 12. So she'll be the first port of call for students in Year 12. Similarly, Mr. Harris is the post-16 learning manager for Year 13. Mrs. Costoya is our head of careers. She uh, advises our students around UCAS, university and wider careers. Mrs. Thompson deals primarily with apprenticeship. She'll be hearing from Mrs. Thompson today when she talks about um, UCAS and apprenticeship routes going forward post 18. Mrs. Brown also works in apprenticeships and work experience, primarily in lower school, but is always available in sixth form to add capacity for when our students need uh, careers advice. Ms. Morrison is our learning mentor. She plays a very important role for us. She oversees our hub areas where students participate in private study. She is brilliant and will be someone that the students see daily as they get on with their work independently. Independent work is really important in sixth form, which, which we'll be going through shortly. Mrs. Naylor is our um, sixth form administration guru and in charge of exams uh, in sixth form. She basically makes the sixth form run and is a very important member of our team. Our students probably won't see much of her unless they go and see her um, in her office, but she basically makes everything work in sixth form. Mrs. Carr is another uh, sixth form administration officer, but also will work with attendance. She shares that role with Mrs. Rigglesworth. So through the week, they work primarily in attendance where they check on the attendance of our students, make phone calls to see where they are if they're not here, and also um, chases up our attendance figures and things like that. They also work in administration, so they support Mrs. Naylor. We then also have our form tutors. So form is slightly different this year, um, as we won't be meeting as a form in form groups, but we still have dedicated form time, um, which students have, are aware of. We have gone through that with them, where they will get assemblies, albeit virtually in a similar way to that we're doing this, and also we'll have form activities that they need to do. They will still be in contact with their form tutor via milk and email, and Miss Allen has indeed this week encouraged them to get in touch with their form tutors to make that first contact. Subject tutors um, will also play a big part in, uh, in what your son or daughter studies at post 16, obviously. They have a variety of subjects that are studied. They play a vital role as they see a lot of your, of your son or daughter, and they will provide us with updates as to how um, they are doing on a regular basis. So just a little bit about our results, uh, successes and destinations. Um, in terms of last year's year 13 leavers, and obviously this data is still um, ongoing and still being updated. 71% went to university, that's very high, nearly three quarters of our, uh, of our students went to university. Um, that's the highest it's been for a number of years and we're very happy with that figure. Um, obviously the results were very different on results day um, so our main priority was getting students to the destinations that, that they wanted and, and you know we're very pleased to say that 71% went to university and will be starting university as we speak. Of those around a third went to Russell Group Universities. Russell Group Universities are seen as 
um, the most prestigious universities um, that deliver high quality courses um, and for our high end uh, top achieving students should I say we uh, they would be aiming to go to Russell Group University so again so around a third of that 71% is a really high figure and one that we're really pleased with and um, we also had a number of apprenticeships um, some very competitive apprenticeships that students applied for and were successful with um, and some of those companies you can see there uh, Lloyd's, Ernst & Young, KPMG, Coca-Cola and, and many more when you can come into the Academy, which hopefully will be very soon, I would encourage you to visit our sixth form area and look at our destinations maps as they give you a, a kind of full idea of where our students all go to and the variety of different things they go on to do after they finish studying with us. In terms of our results, you can get our full, a full picture of our results on the Academy website. Obviously, with, with 2020 figures being centre assessed grades, we are, uh, they are not published and they're not official. That's why I'm giving you the, the 2018 and 2019 figures. Um, our results are, are consistently very high and it's something we're very proud of. And it's a big part of why we're an outstanding sixth form. Um, as you can see, our academic value added, which is basically A-levels and EPQ primarily, um, are plus 0.19 for the value added. And the APS is the average point score. That's the average point score that students get. 35.09 uh, in 2019, that's compared to the national figure there of 34.01. It might not seem like a big gap if, if you're not really sure what you're looking at, but that is significantly above national average. And it does place us in the top 25% of all post-16 providers nationally. That is including private schools and sixth form colleges. Our results are something that we're really proud of and it's something that we work really hard for. And most importantly, the students work really hard for. Um, and it's something that we look to maintain every year. I am very, very proud to say that we are um, kind of the top achieving sixth form in our local area, um, looking at APS particularly, and that's something that we strive to maintain every year because it's something that we're very proud of. So how do we get these great results? It isn't a single thing, actually. It's a combination of things um, in order to get to that end point. Motivation is a key one. Um, our staff are highly motivated and are very professional and we have a very good setup in six form as you can see from the size of our team. But the motivation of our students is, is what sets them apart, I would say, from a lot of others. It was particularly interesting last year with year 13 who, when they found out that they weren't able to complete their exams, they were very upset at that because they're very highly motivated and they wanted to prove themselves, particularly our, our high achieving students. So motivation is, is a key thing and it's something that um, our students have and we encourage on a daily basis. Attendance is obviously another one. If the students aren't here, then they cannot get the knowledge that they need um, in order to get the best grades in their exams and in order to, to get the best experience out of sixth form. We don't really make any apologies about demanding a very high attendance. I know Miss Allen will go through this shortly, but attendance is really important um, and we will make sure that um, students are chased up if they're if they're not attending when they should be. Obviously, there are always reasons why they, they can't attend, but attendance is really important and, and we will push to get them to be here as much as they possibly can. Time management is another key thing. There's a lot more emphasis on independent work at uh, A-level and for level, other level three courses. The students have a lot more flexibility and freedom on their timetable this year. So it's their responsibility to manage their time. And that's something that we try and train them to do. But ultimately it's down to them to, to manage their time effectively. It's important also that they take personal responsibility and independence for their actions. They're not children anymore. That's something that we kind of um, say to them from the start, they're not children anymore, they are, they are young adults and so part of that is, is growing up and acting like adults and taking personal responsibility for their actions but also developing their independence. This will prepare them for the next step, be that university, employment or, or apprenticeship and, and we want to provide them with that independence to make those decisions themselves uh, and also take responsibility. Having targets and goals is really important. We set high targets for our students and that's because if you set a high bar, they strive to, to get there. So having those targets and goals, we try and foster from day one really, and making sure that they have those targets and they work towards those targets really gives them something to aim at. And finally, being treated like an adult. You know, as, as I've said, they're not children anymore and, and we are a sixth form and, and we like to, to have our kind of 
separation from, from the main school. We, we do want to treat them like an adult and, and we do want to prepare them for that next step, but that is reciprocal. So they need to also be behaving like adults as well um, in terms of the responsibility and the things that we've, that we've been talking about. Um, so treating them like an adult, again, is a combination really of all the previous points. So how difficult are level three courses? <laughs> the, the easy answer is they're very difficult. And um, there's a reason why they're called A-levels and the vocational courses are obviously specialist and, and quite complex as well. They are very difficult and it is a big jump from GCSE. And I think students will find out very quickly from the content that they're studying in their lessons that there is a big jump. Um, there is a great emphasis on independent work. That's why we have our study areas. That's why we arrange hub sessions and things like that. And it does involve wider reading and a wider knowledge base. Ultimately, students have chosen these courses because it's what they want to study. Um, it is a big jump and it is challenging. But as I've said already, I, I have every confidence in our teaching staff. We have some amazing teaching staff at the academy. And day to day, we're very privileged to see the lessons that they teach. And it is high quality teaching and learning that is taking place on a daily basis. If students, we, we say generally in, in sixth form, students will get out of their courses what they put in. So if they put the effort in, we will do our part to ensure that they get the best results possible. I'm going to pass on to Miss Allen now, who's going to uh, tell you a few things about how things will run in year 12. And I will speak to you a little bit later on. Hello parents and carers, the voice you're hearing from now is Miss Allen, I'm the learning manager for year 12 students. First of all, I want to start off by saying what an absolutely fantastic start the year 12 students have made in the sixth form. Um, they came in on an induction day and it really did feel like they had been here for weeks previously. They came in with great maturity, lots of enthusiasm and really got stuck into their induction day activities. All of our staff were commenting on how fantastic that day when and it was lovely to have students back into our sixth form again. Um, the students looked fantastic, they really did get involved in their induction activities and the feedback that we've had already is that those lessons have gone brilliantly. I want to just cover now what kind of pastoral support that we have in the sixth form. We really do pride ourselves on this. As a sixth form, we have a dedicated team to look after the various different support elements needed for your sons and daughters. Um, I myself have worked in a sixth form now for seven years and I absolutely love the job that I do. I'm quite fortunate in that my timetable is non-teaching and that means that I am available for students as and when they need me throughout the day. I very much encourage the students to come and speak to me if they are struggling with anything, if they've got questions or concerns, or simply just want to come in and have a chat about how things are going. My door is always open. In saying that, the students will have experienced the last few days that it has been quite busy and that I have had a queue outside my office door. That does calm down, but there are other ways that students can contact me if they need to contact me as well. At some point over the next week, students will be receiving my work mobile number, which is strange for them to receive something like that when they're not used to it in lower school, but that works very well for us in the sixth form. That means that if the student has a question or that they've got a concern or they're worried and they've tried to come and see me, but I'm not available and they're in lessons, then they can drop me a text message. And that's another way that I will communicate with them. And again, it's encouraging them to behave by adults and use the different channels of communication available for them. As Mr Wetton has said, we very much wanted to continue with our form time and assembly sessions despite the disruption that COVID has caused. Um, we put our heads together and decided that we were still going to do those things, um, but we were going to do them virtually. So students received a virtual assembly yesterday and they obviously received a virtual assembly last Friday for their induction. And the feedback is that they are so far going really well. Um, it is that students do those assemblies in the classrooms before the start of their period five lessons. As Mr Wetton said, students have been encouraged to contact their form tutors. In a lot of cases, the form tutor is also the student's subject teacher, and that's quite handy because that relationship then is built through lessons. Although sometimes it's unavoidable and the form tutor doesn't actually come into contact with that student because they don't teach them. 
What I have done is shared with all of the students their form tutor's email address and I've encouraged them to drop them an email and keep in contact with them and try and build that relationship because eventually, in a couple of years time, form tutors are going to be the ones writing references for students for UCAS and writing references for job applications and things like that. So it's really important that the re that relationship is developed. Um, form tutors also will be contacting students via email, but also through our Milk app, which I will be covering for you very soon. In terms of tracking the students' progress, it's something that we, are, all of us as a sixth form team, are very involved in making sure that we're tracking the progress of our students. We want them to reach their true potential. And if we can highlight any areas where they need some support, then we want to make sure we're putting that support in place. Um, I will be looking at all of the academic results that are coming through from class tests and assessments that we do, but I will also be looking at things like attendance and I'll be looking for patterns. If a student is regularly missing certain lessons, I'll be wanting to speak to that student to ask them if there are problems there. The idea is that we want to make sure that we're addressing any issues early. If we can detect that there is some problems, then we want to be sitting down and having an adult conversation with the student and asking them what the issues are and how we can do to support them. We're really, really lucky in the sixth form as well that we are able to offer one-to-one -one support and guidance for our students, and that comes in various packages. So academically, um, we have Miss Mawson, who's our learning mentor, who works extremely hard with the students, who will meet with them, sit down and do sessions of intervention with them, helping them with their organisation, helping them work out a plan of how that they can correct any issues or things that have gone wrong. On the other side of it, socially and well-being wise, we want to make sure that if students are suffering, if they have any problems with their mental health, for example, we we're lucky because we have links to be able to refer them on to get that support that they need to make sure that they're fully supported so that they can achieve their true potential in the sixth form. I also am really, really keen on encouraging rewards and recognition. It's been said already in this presentation that we are so lucky that our students are really dedicated and work hard and we want to recognise this. So we will regularly be looking at what we can do to reward the students. So for example, if a student has done a fantastic piece of work, we will tweet that, we will put it on our Twitter page, we will give them free bacon and sausage butties or sandwiches and hot drinks in the cafe in order to recognise that. At Christmas time, we also have a little award ceremony where we will pick out students who've done particularly well with things and they get to take home awards and certificates for that. So it has been mentioned already that attendance and punctuality are extremely important in the sixth form. What we know nationally, when students come from secondary school and go into post 16, for some reason that attendance te tends to dip. And that's probably because for the first time they have been asked to be adults, behave like adults. And one of the things that they can do is to report their own absences. So it doesn't have to be a parent and carer to report their absences anymore when you get to post 16. That could possibly be one of the reasons why students sometimes feel like they can miss certain lessons and that's why the attendance goes down. It also could be to do with the fact that the subjects they're picking up are really, really difficult and they're exhausting and they're tiring. So when students are getting up in the winter very early in the morning, they're traveling further distances in a lot of cases, it can be very tempting sometimes just to miss and skip lessons. We absolutely encourage our students to have a minimum attendance of 95%. So that gives them a 5% allowance for things like colds and when they're really poorly and they can't get in. It gives them an allowance for medical appointments when medical appointments have not been able to make outside of lesson times. We know our own data tells us that there is an extremely strong link between excellent attendance and punctuality and higher grades. We know that our students who get reach their potential and get those high grades are the students who attend all of their lessons. 
So a little bit of a plea from me to parents and carers, please, is to please avoid taking your sons and daughters out of lesson wherever possible. If those dentist appointments, if those medical appointments can be made outside of lesson time, we would ask you to please, please make sure that that happens. Um, Needless to say, the, the sixth form still continue with the same rule as in lower schools. So the academy does not authorise term time holidays. So we would really, really encourage that if your sons and daughters are wanting to plan a holiday, that they make sure that they do that outside of term time, please. OK, so in terms of reporting absences, I've already mentioned that the students can now report their absences. They can call the absence line and they can tell us that they're not going to be in. However, if they would prefer you to do that, then absolutely, please feel free, you can do that as well. If a student has got an unplanned absence, that means that they've woken up on the day that they're due to attend and they need to inform us that they're not going to be in, we ask them to call as soon as possible, ideally before 8.30 please. If a student has got a planned absence, so for example, lots of our students will be learning to drive and lots of them will eventually have their, their driving uh, tests, then could we please ask that students complete a green slip. That's how we refer to them. It's a green slip that they collect from near the printer in the sixth form. They pop it in a post box and they can complete that themselves. They do not need a parent or carer to sign that for them. And that is the way that we will know that they've got a planned absence. If we do have concerns about a student's attendance, if it drops below that 95% um, mark or if for example we've just detected that a student is regularly missing the same lesson or is regularly missing the first lesson of the day we will of course contact you we will very much ask your support on this so we will ring you just to make sure that first of all you're aware but secondly to ask your support with that I will now pass you back to Mr Wetton and he will discuss with you the post 16 standards and expectations Okay, so I'm just going to talk to you briefly about the post-16 standards and expectations. This is in the parent handbook, which you will uh, have received as well. And it, it kind of will allow you to read this uh, at your own leisure. I think I've kind of tried to summarise it as best as I can at the top. They've been formalised, our standards and expectations, and it is to provide that clear structure for action should concerns arise, because occasionally they do about attendance, behaviour and or meeting deadlines. This is a supportive measure. This isn't a, a draconian way of punishing students. It's a way that we can um, monitor any concerns, but also support them in kind of getting out of um, these situations that might be of a concern. So improving their attendance, making sure that they are meeting deadlines. And that's where the likes of um, Miss Morton will come in to, to help them plan. Like I say, you can look at those at your leisure. Um, there, there are levels, hopefully we won't have any students get to level five, that is our, our most kind of serious level and, and where things start to get a bit dicey in terms of um, places, etc. But I think it's important to stress at this stage that these are rare, it's very rare that students get to those levels and usually um, once they get a level one or two it, it kind of prompts them to, to make those improvements and, and to move out and, and out of the area of concern if you like. There is financial support available in the sixth form for our students if they come from a household where the income, the joint income of the household is 25,000 or less. Um, students would need to apply for this at the start of every term. So they can apply for the first round of the bursary now up until half, October half term. They can then apply in January and then they can apply in April. And essentially what that post 16 bursary money does is it helps our students um, fill in any gaps where they may be financially struggling to access their studies. So things like transportation, textbooks, stationery, equipment that they need specific to their um, course. If you'd like more information about that, you can visit our Post 16 website and the full details are on there, but this will also be printed in the parent handbook, which we will be sending you along with this presentation. I shall now pass you back to Mr Wetton and he will talk to you about exams and target setting. Okay, so 
In terms of target setting, we set minimum target grades which are based on each student uh, aspiring to be in the top 25% nationally for their GCSE profile. Again, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about before with results. We do want to maintain those excellent results. Um, so we do set minimum target grades and each grade is different because it's dependent on how that student's done at GCSE. So the target grades are very much based on previous um, performance, so they are bespoke to the students. We are able to set realistic subject specific targets based on GCSE grades because obviously students have done those, well for the majority of courses, students have done those courses before, but even if they haven't, the algorithm that we use calculates all of their GCSE grades and how they should do in that specific course. So we are able to predict results accurately and we are able to provide you with an idea of what the students will be able to get. Obviously that doesn't always work out, students sometimes exceed those and sometimes they don't quite achieve those, but we are able to set those realistic targets based on how they've done previously. So obviously the old recognised pass of A star to C or what is now 4 and 5 doesn't necessarily apply to A levels. Um, A levels have a slightly different way of grading. We, Confusingly, we still do have letters rather than numbers. So just when you're getting used to the new numbers system, we're kind of back to the old letters. So for A levels, which is what the um, majority of our students do, we have still the A star to E grades. And E is still a pass actually. So although at GCSE an E or, or an old E at GCSE would have been seen as, as a fail or, or not quite a pass, an E is a pass at A level and is worth 16 UCAS points. Um, which is the same as a pass at, at BTEC and a, uh, extended certificate BTEC, should I say. So what that means is every grade counts um, apart from a U. So even if students aren't necessarily at the high end of the A or B profile, every grade is, is counting towards points and can work for them. So it's really important that they continue to work hard whatever level they are at. An A star is worth 56 points, which is the same as a distinction star at BTEC. Now I realise as I'm saying this that this is a long way away in thinking of applying for university and things like that. And as your son or daughter goes through the sixth form and they start to weigh up their options, they will have a better knowledge of what uh, grades equate to UCAS points, etc., and what they need for their university courses. But this is just to give you a quick insight as to how the grades work in comparison to the, to the BTEC and other level three qualifications. So students who are working below their target grade will receive intervention, be that extra hub sessions with Ms. Morton, be that um, extra sessions set by their class teachers. We can use intervention in a variety of different ways according to what the concern about that particular student is. Um, we have obviously cycle reports, which will, um, which will be gone through later, but also um, we have various points of, of checking on progress, such as mock exams, assessments, and as Miss Allen said, we regularly receive updates as to how students are doing in, uh, in their subjects, be that quantitative or qualitative. So in terms of examinations and assessment, all examinations are now in the summer, with the exception of GCSE resit uh, in English and Maths and some BTEC module, module tests. Um, so in some BTEC and other level three courses, they will have assessments as they go along. Um, but for the majority of courses, all exams will now take place in the summer. At the end of year 12, however, we don't do AS levels anymore. We don't offer AS levels. So at the end of year 12, we have kind of an equivalent, which is the progression exams. We do see this, these as, as important as old ASs, if you like, because they are used as, as kind of like a yardstick as to whether or not the students will be able to continue into year 13. These are really important. And I think I don't have to emphasize with you what with what you've just been through in year 11 how important things like progression exams and mock exams are now because ultimately if there is another situation where we have to use sensor assessed grades these are going to provide us with the evidence that we need to see how students are likely to do so there will be progression exams at the end of year 12 but we will prepare the students for those and um, and obviously emphasize the importance of those as, as a real marker as to how those students are doing Additionally, there are mock exams as well. They'll, they'll take place in January. And that's the plan at the moment, although this is subject to change um, according to how things work out with, um, with scheduling, potential closures, etc. But the plan at the moment is to do mock exams in January as usual. As I said before, students studying BTECs and other level threes are continually assessed throughout the year. They all have exams. There might be some coursework in there as well. 
uh, or non-exam assessment. So that they will be throughout the year. There's often very strict deadlines for assessments and that's often because those assessments have to be done for a certain time. It's very easy to fall behind uh, at level three. And so those strict deadlines must be adhered to. Often they, they can be the difference between a grade or, or them getting a grade at all. So it's important that deadlines are taken we will be very keen to keep our parents informed on how their sons and daughters are progressing in their courses and how they're doing generally. We will have in the parent handbook, which we'll be sending out with this presentation, the dates listed on there for when you can expect to receive the progress reports that we run on a regular basis. Just to outline them quickly here, cycle one report is available around mid-December. We will then um, do some mock exams with the students around early February and we will collect that information in. So you will get to hear what those mock results are. We will send them home to you. Um, Tuesday the 11th of February is a time, hopefully, um, if we are allowed to do so, is for you to come in and meet with your sons and daughters teachers to have a discussion about how they are getting on in lesson and have a discussion about any concerns that may have risen. Um, we've highlighted that there in red because obviously we need to be aware that the situation um, may, be, uh, di may be different, it may be the same, it may have changed in February, but that's what we're going to aim for for the parents information evening. Our cycle two report is available around Easter time. We will then have progression exams for the year 12s at the end of year 12, and that information will be collected early July. And again, we will send that information home to you. Um, although we do have those reporting periods and we will be collecting information on your sons and daughters um, target grades, the grades that they're currently on and how they're doing in terms of efforts, there will be continuous assessment that will be carried out by the departments in those subject areas throughout the year. And if issues do come up, then that will be raised with parents, so you will, of course, be informed. Um, another really, really handy way of staying involved with what your sons and daughters are doing, uh, another way to keep an eye on what messages and what homework that your son and daughter is receiving is what we call the Milk app. So in the sixth form, the students are not issued with a paper planner. Um, we took some feedback from our students a few years ago and they said that they didn't like the paper planners, that they liked recording things in their mobile phones. We looked into this and now we have an app which the students use on their phones. The app essentially is a method where we can message the students with any issues or ask them to come and speak to us. We can also send them all of their homework. Now the clever thing about the Milk app is the students have their individual login information, but we also have the opportunity to offer you, the parent or carer, the opportunity to have your login so that you can also track all of those messages and track all of the homework that your son or daughter is doing. I would really, really encourage you, please, um, to download the app to your phones and to request a password so that you can log into the app and keep an eye on what they're doing. It's a really, really good way of keeping fully up to date with how they are doing. Um, what you need to do is go to your app store and look for the Milk for Students and Parents app. Hopefully you can see that on the screen now. That's what you need to look out for. You can also do it on a desktop. So if your phone isn't very fancy, if you're not able to download the app or you don't have enough storage, you can do it on the desktop as well. If you, do, um, if you would like to request a password for the Milk app, please reply to the email that we're sending this out with and we will make sure that we reply with that password for you. What we would ask and what we've asked the students to do is to make sure if you do have the app on your phone that you turn the notifications on. Obviously then if you want to turn those notifications off and you just want to dip into milk every now and then that's absolutely fine but we ask all of the students to turn their notifications on because it is likely that they will receive a number of messages throughout the week. And just for an example this is what the messages look like. Okay, I shall now pass you back to Mr. Wetton, who will talk to you about our Twitter page and uh, the environment that we try and create in the sixth form. Okay, so our Twitter, our handle is at GAPost16. I would encourage you and we encourage all our students to follow our Twitter page as it's 
how best to keep in touch with the day-to-day -day goings on of Sixth Form. Um, in the Sixth Form, we like to foster positivity, positive environment, which in turn creates positive outcomes. And at GA Post 16 is where you can see a lot of this positivity coming through. We often post from our Friday quiz and um, post a lot of our things that are going on outside of lessons as well as um, some departments sending us images of what's going on within those lessons as well. We try and update that um, as much as possible. It's a really good quick reference to see what's going on and I would advise you all to follow it. I'm going to pass you over now to Mrs Thompson, who's one of our careers team, who's going to talk to you about um, a little bit about what careers do and some of the progression routes that our students can take once they finish their post-16 studies with us. Hello parents and carers, um, I'm Mrs Thompson um, and I'm the careers and employment worker. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our careers team. So our careers team is made up of Mrs Costoya, um, who's our head of careers, um, myself, Mrs Thompson and Mrs Brown. Um, we do offer one-to-one -one appointments um, with our students. Um, we also do a lot of group work and delivery through PSHCE. Um, we work in partnership with a lot of local companies, um, local employers, universities, colleges, um, and we offer guidance and support for everybody. Um, we look at the process for both apprenticeships and university applications. Um, so throughout year 12 um, and into year 13, uh, your son or daughter will start deciding and looking at what options are best for them. Um, and whichever one that ends up being, we can offer support and guidance for both. Okay, so we're going to look at the UCAS process. Um, so Mrs Costoya um, is the member of staff that usually deals with the UCAS process. Um, and on the screen now you can see the timeline um, that we go through for it. Now again, this is obviously um, a while away for your son or daughter, but it's good to know um, when it will start kind of happening um, and when we do start needing to put things together for it. Um, so what you can see is from September 2020, um, so obviously this is for this year's um, Year 13 students, uh, we would start looking at working on the UCAS application. Um, we do do this um, within term time and we do offer a specific time for the students to be able to do this with help and support from us. Um, we would look at getting them to draft their personal statement um, and sending that to their form tutor. There's a couple of different deadlines for different applications. So there's an earlier one for the Ox Oxford and Cambridge universities. Um, and then the um, final one for all the other applications is January, January the 15th. Um, now, obviously these dates will um, differ slightly when it comes around to your son or daughter's term um, to apply, but they're just a rough guide to, to kind of how we work it. Right, okay, so what can you do as parents then to help support? So um, to start off, we definitely encourage them um, to start thinking about um, what their destination might be. Um, so if they are looking at university, have a little look at the UCAS Parents Guide. Um, it's a really good idea to sign up for the um, monthly bulletin as well um, via UCAS, um, and you can find that on the UCAS.com website, which should be on your screen now. Um, throughout Year 12, um, you will find that um, open days will start to be advertised for various universities. Um, it's a really good idea um, for students to attend those, um, attend as many as they can um, to get a feel for the places um, and also go with them as well um, as parents. Um, it's important for you to be able to see where your son or daughter is going to be going um, and to see what's going to be there for them. Um, also, if your son or daughter is thinking about an apprenticeship, um, it's absolutely fine if they don't know which kind of direction, university or apprenticeship they're going to go down yet. If they are considering an apprenticeship, start having a look at what's out there. Um, so this year's apprenticeships um, for the higher and the degree level um, usually get advertised um, around November time. So, you know, it's a really good idea to start maybe having a look for this year just to see, to give you an idea of what might be out there next year. Here in the sixth form, we use an online uh, platform called Unifrog. Um, your son or daughter may have used this in lower school, possibly in year 10 or 11, um, but there is more emphasis on it um, in, in sixth form in year 12 and 13. So for Unifrog, we use it um, to have a little look at what's out there in terms of universities and apprenticeships. 
So throughout year 12, what we'll start doing is encouraging um, your son or daughter to use it to research, to have a little look at universities, um, different courses. You can also look at um, different jobs on there and the job profiles. And then what we'll do is we'll start asking them to put, put, put together um, short lists um, of different universities that they may, may like to attend. For anyone who's also looking at apprenticeships, um, it's the same sort of thing on there. Um, you can look at apprenticeships, it pulls data from the government website for live apprenticeships and it allows you to make shortlists. Um, when we do get to application stage for, uni, uh, for university, um, we use Unifrog um, quite a lot to um, look at the um, references um, that subject um, tutors and form tutors will need to do um, for your son or daughter's application. Right, okay, so moving on to apprenticeships then. Um, on the screen now you should be able to see a bit of a time scale um, for apprenticeships. Now this will vary um, from year to year and um, from apprenticeship to apprenticeship depending on the company um, and the level and things like that. But um, as you can see, what we do is um, September of the school year, we ask any students um, who are starting to look at higher apprenticeships or degree level apprenticeships, um, obviously at the start of year 13 this is, um, to start doing the research and start having a look what's out there and registering with various sites. Um, by November, we, we expect all students to have a completed CV um, and to understand how to use a cover letter. Now, it does say November on there, but by November of year 13, um, all students um, will or should have um, a, a CV prior to that anyway. Um, the majority of um, apprenticeship vacancies um, come out between March and April, um, so that's when you will see um, an increase in, in apprenticeships to apply for. Um, so this is when we encourage students to start looking and applying um, and then getting as many um, applications out there as possible. A lot of the higher level apprenticeships and the degree level apprenticeships are found on the employer's web direct websites. Um, so there are a, a select few websites that we, we say to use as a, as a general rule of thumb, so like the Gov site and the UCAS site, but we will also um, encourage students to look at individual companies um, and to access their own websites um, just to see if they're only advertising on there. Um, this just means that students don't miss out on any um, any vacancies that, that, that might not be advertised elsewhere. Okay, so I'm back again just to talk to you about work experience and volunteering. Um, work experience is a really important part of the end of year 12 actually, um, and it's something that we encourage all of our students to do. Um, at the moment, it is slightly up in the air because of the current situation, obviously. We weren't able to do work experience last year, for example, but we did um, plan for alternative careers-based activities um, to substitute for that work experience. It says there what it's essential for, really. I think anyone who's looking for, for medicine, physiotherapy, dentistry, all those other courses that, that are there, particularly for healthcare, work experience is vital, it's essential. Um, ideally that's directly related, but demonstrating those caring skills and empathy for patients. Um, we, we're really experienced in helping students find these placements, so if this is something that your son or daughter is interested in, then, then we'll be able to, to point them in the right direction. Similar with teaching there as well. Um, before students apply for these at, at university, the experience should be completed before the application takes place. That way um, they'll be able to use it uh, to help support their application. Um, during the work experience um, time, we give students a handbook to record their experiences. This allows them to kind of culminate all the thoughts together and again to help them use what they've done to support their application to university or apprenticeship. As always, as, as I'm sure many of you know, the more experience an applicant has, the better it will be for them. So we'll be providing more information about work experience as we go along. Usually we encourage our students to, to have or to start looking for and confirming placements at, at the end of this month. For obvious reasons, that's not, they're not going to be able to do that at the moment. But we would encourage you and your son or daughter to be thinking about what they might want to do work experience wise, assuming things are more back to normal um, or more normal, if you like, than now by the time we get to that time in June or July. So have a think about what kind of thing would help them when doing work experience. 
Just a little bit there about Work Experience Week, um, which is the 29th of June to the 3rd of July. Um, as I've said, that's, that's what we're planning on doing at the moment. Um, that could change, as everything could change at the moment, as I'm sure you're aware, but that's what we are planning to do. Um, as I've said already, we will be providing more information about that as, as and when we can. But have a think about work experience, have a think about what it is that, that your son or daughter wants to do. Again, if they want to teach or they want to go into healthcare, that's something that, that's fairly obvious and straightforward placements to be thinking about. And that just about wraps up our, uh, our information evening. We promised you 40 minutes. We've gone just over that onto 45. And um, hopefully we've been able to answer any questions. I just want to thank you for your time. These things are, are never easy to deliver in person because you're delivering a lot of information in quite a short time. Um, and this has been even more of a challenge talking to a screen and, and hoping that you're all seeing this. So I just want to extend again our welcome to your son or daughter. We're really thrilled to have them in sixth form and thrilled to have you on board. And I just want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to contact us. I'll just uh, pass over to Miss Allen, who will, who will give her final word, and hopefully we provide all that information for you. Thank you. My thanks too for listening to this presentation. Um, well done for getting through a large volume of information there. Um, can I please ask you to keep a copy of the parent handbook to hand and have a look through that as well, please, because it does include a lot of information, a lot of important information for parents of how we run things in the sixth form. As Mr. Wetton said, if you still have any questions, if you have any concerns or worries, please, please do feel free to contact me. You can do that via email. You can reply to the email that we've sent you today, or you can do that by my phone. I'll make sure that my phone number is included on that email for you. So contact me at any time. Thank you very much for listening.